Bam, Mr. True. In this video, we're going to take a look at trapezoids. Now, if you're following all my geometry videos, we've been talking a lot about special types of parallelograms. A trapezoid is not a parallelogram. Uh, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, those are types of parallelograms where you have two pair of opposite sides which are parallel. Well, in a trapezoid, you only have one pair of sides which are parallel. Uh, in this video, we're going to do one pretty simple example here. Uh, we're going to do another example that's got some algebra involved in it with the mid-segment theorem. And then we're going to prove uh, the fact that diagonals of an isosceles triangle, uh, excuse me, trapezoid, are congruent at, at the end of this video. Okay, so trapezoids again are quadrilaterals. That's a straight-sided figure with four sides. Um, and again, only has one pair of opposite sides which are parallel. Uh, here we have a general trapezoid. Uh, the sides, the two sides which are going to be uh, parallel to each other are going to be the bases. It's not necessarily the top and bottom, if you will. I can turn this orientation around and have uh, my parallel sides maybe going this way. Uh, and you can just simply turn your book or redraw it on your own piece of paper so that the bases are horizontal. That's kind of standard, but certainly not required. Uh, the two parallel sides are the bases. The two sides which are not parallel are always called the legs, regardless of whether, again, they're kind of going up at an angle or, you know, however I have this parallelogram situated. The parallel sides are the bases. The two other sides, uh, opposite sides, are the legs. Every angle inside of a trapezoid is going to be considered a base angle because they're all going to be against, you know, one of the bases, whether it's this base or this base. Uh, our examples are mainly going to be focused around the isosceles trapezoid, which is like a triangle. Uh, you know, the real definition of an isosceles triangle is, is a triangle with at least two sides which are parallel, uh, congruent. But if we have all three sides, we generally call it an equilateral or equal angular uh, triangle. So like an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides, an isosceles um, <clears throat> trapezoid has the legs which are congruent. I could probably draw this so that one of the bases uh, is the same length as the two legs, but that's, you know, that's not what we're looking at when we look at an isosceles triangle and trying to define it. The two legs are going to be congruent. So, <clears throat> if you think of this, um, this isosceles trapezoid as an isosceles triangle, that we just chop the top off. Remember that in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are going to be congruent. Well, that same thing holds true here. Uh, if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of the base angles are going to be congruent. So these two legs are congruent, so these base angles that are opposite those uh, legs which are congruent are themselves congruent. So these two are congruent, um, opposite the legs which are congruent and these two angles are going to be congruent. Um, the consecutive angles uh, along each of the legs can very well, most of the time we'll have different measurements, but um, you know, here's the bottom base, those are congruent, top base, those are congruent. Also, the diagonals of an isosceles um, trapezoid are congruent themselves. So if I have an isosceles trapezoid and I draw a diagonal going to each of the opposite vertices, um, those lengths are going to be equal. Uh, we'll be proving this particular theorem or property at the end of this video. An example. So, I have a quadrilateral. I know it's a trapezoid because, again, I have one pair of opposite sides which are parallel. And I want to find the measurements of all of the angles. Well, I have these little tick marks on each of the leg, which means that this is an isosceles trapezoid. I don't have to necessarily write that down. We're supposed to be able to recognize that and the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So if this is 65 degrees, guess what the measure of angle 3 is? And again, we're talking about the angles that are opposite those legs which are congruent, so those angles, those base angles are going to be equal. The measure of angle 3 is equal to um, 65 degrees. Okay, <clears throat> well, what's the measure of angle 1? And if I can find the measure of angle 1, I will also know the measure of angle 2. Well, you know, can't forget all those properties we've been learning in geometry. Every one of these chapters builds upon themselves. And when you have two parallel lines that are being cut by a transversal, those, uh, missed that a little bit, but those same side interior angles are 
supplementary. So the measure of angle one plus 65 degrees must be equal to 180 degrees. Supplementary is two angles which add up to 180. So uh, we have a little equation to solve for. It's very simple. We're just going to subtract both sides by 65. And the measure of angle one is equal to, well, 180 minus 60 is 120, and 120 minus 5 is 115 degrees. So the measure of angle one is 115 degrees. The measure of angle three is 65 degrees. And we can make sure that's right by adding these two and make sure they do add up to 180. And again, angle two is a base angle, a congruent base angle to the measure of angle one. So it's also going to be 115 degrees. Trapezoid mid-segment theorem. We talked about mid-segments and triangles. They had special properties um, that when you had uh, any triangle, didn't have to be isosceles, but if you had a triangle and you drew a mid-segment, that that mid-segment was parallel to the third side um, of that triangle, and it was equal to half the length. We still have a good rela a, a similar relationship uh, to our trapezoids. Uh, in a trapezoid, if you have a mid-segment, a segment connecting the midpoints of the opposite, uh, or the legs, I have this kind of looking like an isosceles trapezoid. I just, I don't know why I drew it that way. It doesn't have to be. Uh, that's why I have the single tick marks over here that this is a mid-segment or midpoint because these two segments are equal. Midpoint because these two segments are equal. These do not have to be equal to each other on the opposite sides of the trapezoid. The mid-segment is parallel to the bases. Okay, so I have a trapezoid, one, uh, two pair of parallel, or excuse me, one pair of uh, parallel sides, and that mid-segment going through the middle of the trapezoid is going to be also parallel. So we have three parallel uh, segments. The length of the mid-segment, that blue line, is equal to half of the sum of the lengths of the bases. We're in a trap in a triangle. We only had one side that was parallel, so the mid-segment was half of that length. Well, we still have this half thing going on, but we have two bases. So we're going to add up those two bases, the length of AB plus the length of DC. Uh, take that sum and divide it by two or multiply it by half, same thing, and you are going to get the length of the mid-segment, whoops, forgot my letters, my mid-segment of EF. Let's get to an example that's dealing with this uh, theorem. As soon as I find my remote. So here we have a trapezoid. Uh, why is it a trapezoid? Because I have one pair of parallel sides. We have a mid-segment going through the middle of it. Why? Because I have well, tick marks on each of the legs shown they've been cut in half, and thus EF is the mid-segment of trapezoid uh, ABCD, which means that the length of this um, mid-segment is equal to half of the sum of my two bases. And I've rotated this a little bit so you don't think the bases are always horizontal. Uh, okay, so we have to solve this for, um, we'll solve for X and we'll find the three lengths. So we have 4X, <coughs> plus 5 is equal to 1 half the sum of the other two um, of the bases. So we have uh, 4x minus 7 plus 6x minus 5. I uh, picked one with some, you know, actual good bit of algebra in it here. So we need to solve this for x. We need to, of course, work our way out of the parentheses. So we're going to combine all these like terms here, and we get 4x plus 5 equals 1 half. Uh, <clears throat> we have parentheses in here. I always do it with substitution uh, just to make sure I don't have any issues with signs. Like if this were a negative, if I were subtracting the bases for some reason, I would you know, want to remind myself to actually distribute that negative uh, through the parentheses if there was one or exponents, whatever. But um, there's no exponent, there's no leading coefficient that's other, anything other than one, there's no division going on. So these parentheses are just my habit of how I substitute. They're not really going to do anything because nothing can be added in here or in here. So we have 4 plus 6x, which is equal to 10x. We have negative 7 plus negative 5. Uh, so we want to add those and keep the signs. It's negative 12. And now that we've got the inside of the parentheses cleaned up, we're going to take this one half and distribute it through the parent whoop, distribute it through the parentheses. And we get 4x plus 5 is equal to half of 10, which is 5x, and half of 12, which is negative, well, negative 12, 
which is negative 6. And um, we got, uh, you know, just a simple linear uh, equation with only one variable, so we're just going to solve for x. We're going to, let's see, I'm going to subtract both sides by 4x and get 5 is equal to 5 minus 4, which is 1x minus 6. We're going to move that, uh, I have my x on the right hand side now, so I'm going to move everything over to the left, it's this left, which means I'm going to add 6 to both sides and get x is equal to 11, which uh, is the same thing I got when I did my notes. Now, <clears throat> if, even if the direction said just solve for x, um, or if, if the directions did say solve for x, if I wrote any, I'd be done. But uh, if I need the actual lengths of all these segments, then I'm not finished. I want to take this value of 11 and plug it back in here. And also, it's not a bad idea, even if the question says solve for x, to take it, plug it into these expressions, and actually find out if the mid-segment is half of the sum of the two bases, you know, just to check your work, even if I only needed to find x. So we have, let's see here, we have that AB is equal to 4 times x, which is 11, um, minus 7. Well, that's going to be equal to 4 times 11 is 44. And 44 minus 7 is going to be equal to, let's see here, how about uh, 37? Okay. The other base is, uh, well, let's just go in order. EF is equal to... I'll put a starter on myself, that's the mid-segment, is equal to 4 times x, which is 11, plus 5, so that's 44 again, plus 5 is 49, and we have dc, which is 6 times x minus 5, that's 66 minus 5 is equal to 61. And um, let's make sure those are right. Let's see here. We have uh, 49 should be equal to 1 half of 37 plus 61. That's 49 is equal to 1 half of 61, 91, 98. And 49, let's see here, half of 98. Well, 98 divided by 2. 98 divided by 2. Well, 4 times uh, 2 is equal to 8, so we have that. Uh, 8, a remainder of uh, 1, so bring down that. I got 1, 18, 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9. And that means that the mid-segment was half the sum of the two bases added together. Uh, so now, not only do I know my, no, uh, know my three segments, but I know my answer is right, because I have checked it. We're going to prove that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent with a two-column proof. Triangle, or excuse me, trapezoid ABCD is isosceles, so we're going to prove that the diagonals are congruent, that AC is congruent to BD. Statement, reason, two-column proof, trapezoids, isosceles. I just said that, so it's given. Okay, now you can see that as we've drawn our um, diagonals through this trapezoid, I've actually done a proof similar to this uh, in a previous video proving congruency with triangles that are overlapping. I uh, couldn't use properties of trapezoids in those because I hadn't used them yet, but I can now. Uh, we have triangle ACD and triangle uh, DB. A. Make sure you make sure remember when you uh, name your congruent polygons that you keep the corresponding angles in the proper order of those names. If I can prove that those two triangles are congruent, then, well, congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and thus we'll be able to say that AC is uh, congruent to BD. But for now, I don't know that those two triangles are congruent. So let's just start with, uh, you know, uh, trying to build up that information that we need. Uh, proving two triangles congruent, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, unless they are right triangles, and then you can sneak away with that hypotenuse leg thing. But, um, yeah, we need to build that information on our proof. So, the first thing I can see here is that BA is congruent to CD uh, because, well, they're the legs of an isosceles trapezoid, and thus they are congruent based on that definition. There's the legs, they're congruent, because, like I said, we know 
uh, that the legs of isosceles trapezoids are congruent. Okay, well again we're trying to build up information about these two triangles enough to be able to say they're congruent and these two triangles uh, I brought up the showing congruency or proving congruency and overlapping triangles because well they overlap and they share a side and every time two triangles share a side somewhere in your proof you're going to be using something called a uh, hmm starts with an R why yes that was the reflexive property of congruence AD is congruent to AD that side that is shared in both of the triangles that's why we have to write the same thing twice saying that it's equal to itself uh, that's because it's part of two separate triangles that we're trying to show are congruent. Well, uh, let's mark that in our diagram here. <clears throat> so, I'm really close to using, let's see here, I think I'm used to, close to using side angle side. Uh, B angle B A D, uh, which is making up, you know, of course, part of this triangle here, uh, B D A. And angle C D A is part of this triangle here. If I could somehow say that these two angles are congruent, then I could use, uh, I think, side angle side to prove my triangles are congruent. How can I prove that these two base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent? I think we just learned that in a previous theorem. And that's what we're going to use uh, to verify or state that those two angles actually are congruent. Well. My base angles are congruent. I kind of gave away my next line already. Uh, these two triangles are going to be congruent due to the side angle side theorem. Just make sure you, again you get those um, letters in the correct order. Uh, if you wanted to start with B uh, angle BAD like I did over here, then BAD is going to be congruent to triangle CDA. Kind of like the same statement, but I'm going to use a triangle symbol instead of an angle symbol. And of course, uh, use the side angle side theorem. So, we got our triangles are congruent, and that means that we can say that any corresponding part of those two triangles are congruent themselves, and side BD of triangle BAD and side CA of triangle CDA, those are corresponding parts of those congruent triangles, and they just also happen to be the diagonals of our trapezoid, and they are congruent. So, CPC, TC helps us uh, prove that our diagonals of our isosceles uh, trapezoid are congruent. And that means I'm done with my last example. That means I'm done with this video. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do your homework.